God bless you. Welcome to a, a Q&A smile tonight. Hey Amen. God has been so good and so Amen. kind. Sorry we're a little late. We had some technical difficulties, but Amen. we're in the house. That's the Glory. important thing. So we thank God. Will you bow your heads with prayer with me? Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for another day that was not promised to us. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we ask you to open up our minds and understanding tonight about the fruits of the Spirit. And God, we'll be so careful to give your name the glory. We give your name all the honor. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Amen. Lord. All right, God bless you tonight. We have a good lesson tonight, good discussion, uh, Q&A tonight. We're going to talk about the importance of the fruit, uh, fruits of the Spirit. The importance of the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to have those attributes in your life. Most of all, it's important to have them working and manifesting in your life. Tonight, tonight we have uh, here is Sister Geraldine Briscoe, our admin. Glory! We have our church mother, missionary Willie Mae Bell. We have uh, Sister Bell. We have Woo! Brother Matthew. Woo! Brother Matthew's here. And we have our media old personality, Woo! Sister Mama. Mama. So we just thank <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we just thank God for you tonight. Thank Amen. You. We're going to go into our scripture for tonight. Amen. Who has a scripture? Galatians. Yeah, it's Galatians 5, 20 through, 22 to 24, if you Amen. read that. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh. Issue. So tonight's lesson, tonight's uh, discussion, the importance of the fruits of the Spirit. We have our admin here. And our admin is going to tell you what she got, amen, from the fruits of the Spirit and the importance of the fruits of the Spirit. And we're going to go around the room. Amen. Um, what it means to me, it's an action or attributes. Which one's life should be living with good morals, um, motives as well as doing good things for others. To die to self and search ourselves so we can produce the fruit of goodness which is a true mark of godliness inside out. The fruit has um, an attractive power and draws people to Jesus through our actions. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the fruits of the Spirit is very, very, very important. Very important. Amen. All right, Sister Bell, what did you get out of the fruits of the Spirit, Sister Bell? All right. So the fruits of the Spirit for myself, God is telling me that in order for me to draw other people to Christ Jesus, I have to in turn abide by the love, joy, peace, long suffering, which comes with being on Christ's side because he suffered for us. So he's telling me that I have to suffer for him, but it's in a good way. And when I do, suffer and when people see these characteristics from me they will in turn be drawn to Christ Jesus through my lifestyle amen the fruits of the spirit all right brother Matt you don't have to say nothing if you don't want to but it's up to you um I'll say something okay you go ahead go ahead um so for me what I got from it for me personally is you know patience is something that I you know, suffer with, you know, sometimes I'm impatient, I don't want, I want things to happen right away, but, you know, it just reminds me of, like, how Christ is patient with us, you know, we may stray further away from him, but he's always, you know, there just waiting for us, okay. and what also stood out to me is those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires, meaning less of us and more of him right that's right and you know and it's said let us not become conceited provoking one another and envying one another which makes me think about the ten commandments thou shalt not uh, covet. covet one right. another and also let's not provoke one another to anger right you know? oh amen, amen. all know? right yeah that's good amen all right amen. brother matt all right all right, all right. Amen. All right. mother you have something to say no, I just, no? I, I 
know where we was at. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. Lesson. <laughs> that's lesson. I know that you got to be gentle, mm-hmm. long suffering with people. Right. You just can't uh, turn people around if they don't know where they're going or what they're doing. That's you right. have to be patient with that person. Right. You know, to help them to learn them to go through things. When you're going through trials and tribulations, mm-hmm. you have to go along with them to be gentle. That's right. You all right. have to show how to love them. Amen. You have to love them. Amen. 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 We have to be meek, humble. Right. Ain't we? That's right. Amen. And I didn't study, but I'm just coming off the top of my head. That's right. Because I didn't know where we was at. Uh-huh. And I told the fruit of the Spirit is good. It said the fruit of the Spirit, uh, the Spirit in love, joy, peace, and long suffering, gentle. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, you have to be gentle, but you just can't go in and tell them, say, this here, you stop this, you stop that. No, you have to be gentle. Right. You got right. to know how to sp- come to that person, speak to that person. That's right. That's right. To get them to draw them into Christ. That's right. All right, Sister Mel Mel, you have any? Um, just starting off is just what Mother was just saying that um, those who, everybody who embodies those um, individual um, gifts, were set apart from the unbelievers because. Um, we know we know who Christ is and we know um, what he gives we know who he is and what he is to us amen. and we walk in that amen all right amen. amen the fruits of the spirit the fruit of the spirit love joy peace mm-hmm. patience kindness mm-hmm. generosity mm-hmm. faithfulness gentleness self-control yes. those are in Christ as mm-hmm. distinguished from unbelievers yes. and that have been gifted with the Holy Spirit enable them to bear fruit, which is the holiest of fruit. So, amen, when you are a child of God, you should see those attributes in a Christian. Yeah. Amen. amen. If you're a child of God, you say that you're on the Lord's side, you've been saved, then we should see some of the fruits. Amen. I tell people, we don't judge people, but I do inspect your fruit. Amen. So if you're an apple tree, I don't expect you to have nectarines on it. If you're if you a, you a nectarine tree, I don't expect you to have pomegranates on it. So, amen. So whatever you whatever you have, whatever you're supposed to be, that's what you're supposed to be. We don't amen. judge like the world judge. Amen. Right. We, we, don't, we don't judge like the world judge. We ought to. We have to know how to go to people. And if somebody's doing something that you don't like or you think is not appropriate, you ask God to give you the know-how to tell them. Right. You ask God, amen. And amen. when you go to that person, you got to go to them considering yourself. Be meek. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. You wouldn't want nobody to come to you and hurt your feelings. No, so right. don't go to nobody else and hurt their feelings. That's right. You got to understand there was a whole, there, there, what is the holiest fruit? I was looking up this because I was thinking about all the fruits that the Bible talks about. And I didn't know in Judaism, pomegranates are depicted in the temple King Solomon built in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Jewish tradition is teaching us that the pomegranate is a symbol for righteousness. Mm-hmm. The pomegranate is a symbol of righteousness. And if you open up a pomegranate, you see it's red. Yes, it yeah. is. And it's red and it has seeds. Oh, yes. Well, those seeds grow. Oh, yes, Am I right? And we eat the seed. I don't know if y'all, some of y'all eat pomegranates. I like I pomegranates. I do. Amen. They're kind of messy, but I like them. Me Amen. Too. You cut them open, you eat the seed, you drink the juice. And you got to understand, so, <clears throat> excuse me, here the, the pomegranate symbolizes the righteousness mm-hmm. because it's said to have 613 seed that corresponds with the 613 of the commandment of the Torah. Mm-hmm. So it, it coincides with the Torah. Yeah. So that's why they feel that pomegranate is a holy mm-hmm. uh, uh, fruit. So if you are pomegranate, that means you got to be holy. Right. Amen. You, if you're a pomegranate, that don't mean you act like a nectarine. Right. Right. If you're a pomegranate, that don't mean you act like a banana. No, that's right. Right. Amen. And I don't care who's talking to you. And see, the thing is, in church, we have to realize, we have to watch the company we keep. Yes. Yes. We have to watch the people that's putting stuff in our ear. Yes. But let me tell you something, the devil can use anybody he chooses to. Yes. He'll use the person that's closest to you. Yes. A lot of times, the attacks in your life come from people that know you, yes. come from people that say they love you, and come from people that say they ride or die. Yes. Those were the attacks because you're not expecting an attack to come from there. Am I right? right. You're expecting an attack to come from the outside. outside. But right. David said, I could have took it better. Yes. It was the ones on the outside. outside. But he said, the ones that dipped in the cup, those are the ones that betrayed me. That's those are the ones that talked about me. Those are the ones that ostracized me. Those are the ones that gave me a headache. So you got to understand, everybody say they're your friend. Everybody say they love you, do not love you. And you got to understand the difference. You got to understand the difference. I don't care. You know, you, uh, uh, they used to tell me, you kill, per- you kill uh, anger with kindness. You kill that person that's mean to you with kindness. That's you be right. kind to them because Christ is kind to us. Right. 
<clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> my allergies are kicking up, but that's all right. There are seven, there are seven heavenly fruits. There are seven, and I'm going to give you these seven heavenly fruits. There are seven heavenly fruit. One, wheat. Wheat is a heavenly fruit. Two, barley. Barley is a heavenly fruit. Three, grapes. Grapes is a heavenly fruit. Four, figs. Fig is a heavenly, a heavenly fruit. Pomegranates is a heavenly fruit. Olive and oil. Olive oil is a heavenly fruit. And date. Date a heavenly fruit. These are the fruits. These are the things they talk about in the Bible. So our life should line up to one of them fruits. If your life is not lining up to one of them fruits, you better check your fruit. Right. And don't you know a uh, 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 one bad fruit can spoil a whole bunch of good fruit. Amen. Ooh, I can't get no help. I can't get no help in there. I'm going to say it again. One bad fruit can spoil the whole bunch of good fruit. So what are you saying, Pastor? Watch who's hanging out with you. Don't let them spoil you. Am I right? Don't let them rotten your fruit. Right. Amen. Don't let them put all that negative stuff and stuff in your mind and amen in your heart and your soul and all that. You got to understand how to get things together. Am I right? right. All right, we'll give Sister Briscoe. Y'all get some chairs from there and come on up here. Y'all too far in the back. The fire up here. Amen. Hold on, she's gonna come in. One of the things that um God was showing me and he kept telling me about a seed. And he was telling me about a tree and how the tree brings forth fruit. Whatever tree, whatever seed that was planted, that tree is going to bring forth the fruit. That, um, in other words, that was planted. And I was like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? He said, these are the virtues that will grow in us. Okay. Like fruit grows on, it, on trees. When our lives are rooted in Christ and watered by faith, and I went to Psalm 1 and 3, and it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not water, wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So the Lord, I feel that the Lord was telling me that, in other words, that if we've got the fruit of the Spirit, we've been born again, we right. have the Holy Ghost, right. that we are supposed to be, in other words, bringing forth fruit. Right. And it's not for the fruit for us to just keep, but it's, in other words, to share and to bring somebody else in. That's right. That, you know, in other words, this might be weak or that don't know. And so, but first of all, we have to be planted. Right. right. We got to be planted. We got to know for sure that we are saved, that we are filled with the Holy Ghost. We got to know and have our mind made up right. and have a sober mind. Right. Because if we're, in other words, like you say, Pastor, if we are an orange tree and we're doing apples, I can't bring nobody. No. Okay. I can't bring nobody because then I'm, you know what, I'm a falsified. Right, right. I'm a falsified. I'm bringing forth corrupt fruit. Right, right. You know, and stuff. And he just kept telling me, he said it was about the seed, the right. seed being planted and how it grows into, he said that seed represents the faith. Right. He said, mm -hmm. you know, and it grows into a tree that it provides shade, it provides whatever is needed right. for those, in other words, that you come in contact with. Right. So he said it's not just about, in other words, in church. It's about, you know, are we walking by the Spirit, right. you know, and being led by the Spirit because it should show wherever we go. Right. Yeah. Even on our job. Sometimes, right. you know, you don't have to say anything. That's right. You don't even have to say that you're a Christian. You don't even right. have to say what you believe. Right. You know, all of a sudden, it, hey, they see your fruit, all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're coming and sitting and just start telling you stuff. Right. Yeah. Just start yeah. telling you stuff. And I'm mm. like, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do with this? And the Lord said, just encourage them. Right. Encourage them. You know, in other words, they need, they come and they're looking for guidance, a way right. out of something. Right, right. You know, and stuff. And that's what the fruit that we are supposed to be bearing. Right, right. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. So Brother Matthew? Yeah, and you know, I just want to touch on what you said, Pastor, about how we got to watch the company that we keep. Right. Yeah. It just reminded me about how God said we are in this world, but not, we're not supposed to be of this world. Right, right. Amen. You know, we're called to be set apart. We're supposed to be different you know we can't be you know living for the world and serving god because we can't serve two masters that's right amen, amen. amen. that's amen. right that's so correct all right i just want to add to your uh explanation also when it came to me you were talking we have to be on a solid foundation mm -hmm. also 
So if we're on a solid foundation, then we will have the fruits of the Spirit. We will be able to spread that fruit, mm -hmm. not just on in our character, but if someone said, like you said, they need a word from the Lord, we're able to deliver that word. Amen. They're able to receive that word. Amen. So we know that that's the fruits of the Spirit as well. So we have to be rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. We thank God. We have some more people to come in our Q&A. Amen. Sister Janet. Amen. 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 Join us our Q&A. Sister Tamika. The bells. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. Thank God for y'all being on our Q&A. Listen, uh, there, there, there are five fruits that come from heaven. There are five fruits that come from heaven, and I'm going to give them to you. One is grapes. The other is dates. The other is figs. The other is olives. And we talked about the pomegranate. There are gifts, are heavenly fruits of God. These are heavenly fruits of God. Amen. What is the first fruit of God? It's the giving of a person first substance to God. So your fruit given to God is your first substance. What you give to God. That's why it's so important to pay your tithes, yeah, yeah. to give your offering. Yeah. Because not only are you giving God your tithe, but you're giving him time. Yeah, God yeah. wants just not your tithe, your money, but he wants your time. Yeah, and when you forsake giving him his time, he gets angry. Yeah, right. Because God's a jealous God. You don't, you don't want you to put nobody in front of him. And when you put people in front of him, he gets angry. He gets jealous. That's why he, he can punish Israel. You can't put no other God before me. I have no, don't have no other God before me. So when we when we put people in front of God, or we put our TV show in front of God, or we put our job in front of God, God gets angry. Mm -hmm. Oh, he gets angry. And what he'll do is he'll let you lose that job yep. because he wants you to come back to him. Yes. There's a way God has you to come back to him. Right. He'll let things happen. Amen. Yes. You know, if that person's yes. keeping you from him, he'll make you get rid of the person yes. or he'll get rid of the person yes. for you. Yes. Yes. Amen. So you got to realize, am I giving God, I tell people this all the time, when you're going through the week, am I giving God time? What time am I sacrificing? What am I giving the first? That's why when I wake up in the morning, I thank God. He's my, I give my first fruit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for seeing another day. I didn't have to be here today. It could have, I could have been the other way. You could have been planning my funeral, but I'm here. Thank you, Lord. What can I get to you today? I can give you my service. I can live right. I can treat people right. Like, you know, make sure everybody good that's around me. Make sure I, I witness in the streets. Do you know God? Do you know God? You know he's a savior. You know there is a savior. You know, see, that's our job, y'all. When you bear fruit, your job is to go out there and get them folk. Amen. That's our job as Christians. We have to be we have to be fishermen. Amen. Go get them folks. Bring them in. Bring your family in. Bring bring your sisters and brothers. Bring your co-workers. Tell them about your job. I mean about Christ. On your job. So a lot of times what I find out is the reason why we don't like to tell people about Christ on our job, because we're not living right on the job. They don't know we Christians on our job. We say and do anything, joke, tell lies and flam flies. So they don't understand. Right. You're a Christian? That's why we don't bring people to church with us. Because we we, we got two faced. Uh -oh. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Because when we come to church, we're holy. Mm -hmm. When we get out of this church, we're doing everything that's not like Christ. Mm -hmm. You got to either gonna be in or you out. Amen. If you're gonna be saved or you're not. Amen. Am I right? If you're gonna be in, you got to be in this thing. You know, let me tell you, church. Jesus is soon to come. It's too late in the day to play. Hell is too hot. Eternity is too long. If you got to make up your mind, am I going to serve God? Am I, I don't care. Things, opposition is going to come against you. People going to come in your life. The enemy is not going to want you to do right. So you got to learn how to rebuke. That's why I tell the church, you got to have power. Yes. You got to get to a place in your life that you got power. power. What do you mean? Amen. I don't have to keep going back to that same sin. Yeah. Come on. I have to keep going back. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an overcomer. Amen. We're overcomers. Amen. All right? Amen. I'm an overcomer. So I'm not going to keep letting this thing get me every time. Right. See, the enemy knows what to get you, how to get you. Right. Yeah. You keep putting it in your face. Yes, he like does. that carrot. He's dangling in your face. And you keep looking at that carrot. Pretty soon you want that carrot. That's what the enemy does. He knows if you got off something, then he knows, uh oh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get him back on the house. I'm going to bring it around them. Yeah. Amen. When you when you get free for something, get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it. If you have a problem with alcohol, don't bring no alcohol in the house. Right. Whatever's in the house, pour it out. Yes. If you if you uh, addicted to prescription, don't even call the pharmacy for the prescription. Right. No, just leave it alone. Amen. Some things you got to get off. God can't do everything. He can, but sometimes He wants you to put your foot first. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Sometimes come on in, get a chair for for. Uh, uh, Amen. Yeah. So you got to understand. That God is a just God. Yes. Amen. God is a just God. And God, we have to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, 
we have to understand whatever we're going through in our life, we must know that God will bring us out. Mm -hmm. God will yeah. bring you out. But you got to put your foot first. Yeah. Amen. You got to put your foot first. Yeah, we're in Q&A. So we're coming to Bible study after the Q&A. I'm just letting her know, yeah. So we have to, we have to understand that, you know, uh, displaying the fruits of the Spirit is, is only right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So people should look at your fruit and tell you that you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. They should have no, no uh, uh, confusion that you say. Mm -hmm. Am I right? They should have no confusion that you're living for Christ. Mm -hmm. But what happened is we are confusing people because we live in one way at church and live in another way at home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. We live in one way at church and then another way at home. And that's not God. No, it's not. That's not God. Bitter and sweet can't come from the same fountain. Sure Either you win or you out. Either you say or you're not. Amen. And you see, see you don't understand God is a sovereign God. He is a sovereign God, but he does get tolerant. He, he do get frustrated with us. Amen. He do get frustrated. The Bible lets us know. He told Moses, he said, I curse the day I made man. That's how angry was because we are so stubborn. We're so disobedient. We don't want to listen to nobody. We don't want to listen to nobody but ourselves. Am I right? And then we feel that if we don't do it, then it should, if, if somebody else do it and they do it better enough, we're upset. Mm -hmm. And so much competition in the church, that's why we have so many problems. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to outdo each other. When you have the fruits of the Spirit, I'm not trying to outdo you. Right. I'm trying to help you. Right. I'm trying to help you come up. Right. I'm trying to help you see what God has for you. That's, that's my job. Exactly. Am I right? My job is to help you be better. My job is to see the potential in you, just like at your, at your work. When they know that they see the potential in you, that's why sometimes the supervisor get upset because they see the potential, but you're not doing it. Amen. They see that you have the know-how, but you're lazy. Amen. So it gets them upset and they get angry. Amen. So what are you saying, Pastor? A lot of times in our Christian walk, when we just plant the fruits of the Spirit, amen, we must let our light so shine that men will see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. God is looking at what we do. God is looking at how we treat one another. Amen. Am I right? Sometimes we treat folk, and we know we ain't treating them right. Amen. Turn that. I got to turn that arrow. I'm hot. I'm hot. We got to get some air in here. Amen. Get some air going. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. So, so the, the fruits. So, we have to give God our first fruit. And then we got to understand, uh, fruits is morals, motive, as well as doing good things for others. Producing fruit of goodness is a time marked of godliness. It also has an attractive power and draws people to Jesus through Christian action. In other words, if your fruit is you really in Christ and your fruit's really good, you should be drawing other people. Amen. Mm -hmm. People should be stopping you Amen. and saying, well, there's something about you. There's something different about you. I noticed there's something different about you. And they should be seeing that. Yeah. Walmart, Target, yeah, Fries, mm -hmm. the bank. Yeah. Amen. I get people tell me all the time, what is it about you? You come in here always happy. I ain't happy because I got a lot of money in the bank. Mm -hmm. I'm happy because I can come to the bank. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. And I try to, they always say, what do you want me to call you? Pastor, Reverend, call me whatever you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. But call me whatever you want. <laughs> Am I right? So we have to understand that. Uh, people in our job, people in our home should know that you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why we're so ashamed to let people know that we say. Amen. I don't understand that. Amen. Amen. You should tell, want to tell everybody you say. Amen. Right. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Let me tell you something. If you be ashamed in front of God in front of men, God will be ashamed in front of his father. Right. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So you can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Who cares what they think about you? So what? Right. Right. They ain't paying your bills. So what? Amen. Who cares what they say about you? So what? They don't pay your bills. So you ain't got to worry about that. It's about your soul. That's right. It's your soul. It's your soul. And it, we're all trying to make heaven our home. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to make... And sometimes it's hard. Let me tell you something. I'm not never saying it's easy to be a Christian. I'm Ooh. not going to tell you that. I'm not going to say it because every rose got a thorn. Amen. Yes. And a thorn will poke you. Yep. Yes. Amen. And the Lord didn't promise it's going to be a bed of roses. Right. He didn't say we would have an easy road. Am I right? Yep. But he did say, I'll be with you always oh, until always. the end yeah, of the earth. So yeah. I don't care what you're going through. Guess what? He's going to be there. Yes, right. I don't care how hard it gets. Guess what? He's he going to be there. there. You know why? Because he knows you. Right. He knows what you're going through. Yeah. He knows you're expected in. 
All he wants you to do is trust him. Yes. Do you trust me? Yes. Do you trust me for the fixes and low? Mm -hmm. Do you trust me I can bring you out? Mm -hmm. Do you trust me I can do what I say I can do? And that's all the Lord wants you to do. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. He always gives you double for your trouble. Yeah. You go through things in your life, you lose something, God will put replace with something better. Yes, he he does, God does this, God does this with, with, with multiplication and add on. He don't ever deal with subtraction. Come on. The only time he's going to subtract from your life is when it don't benefit you. Right. And when it's pulling you from the kingdom of heaven. Yes, right. Because a lot of, sometimes a lot of stuff, it pulls you from the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. A lot of times it pulls you from the, So the Lord is trying to tell us, you know what? You have to live this life that we talk about. Amen. 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 We got to live this life, church. Amen. And, and it's, like I said, it's not always easy. But you have to display the fruits. I don't care. Sometimes people say stuff to you. Amen. They try to provoke you. The enemy knows how to provoke you. Yes, yes, sure. I get the worst provocation. Let me tell you when. Tuesdays and Fridays when I'm fasting. Mm -hmm. It seemed like yeah. all hell break loose in my life. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to go there with me. And then I have to think. Lord, mm -hmm. Lord, I've been going through. I don't want to go through and say something to somebody and mess up my fast. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't win all this time without eating. Then You know right. what I mean? But the enemy will try you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Last week, I got somebody and they cut me off and flipped the bird. Cut oh, me off. Yeah. And the devil said, you, the devil said, you ought to run them down and tell them something. I ran them down, got to the light, and I just looked at them. And the Lord said, don't you do that. That's right. He said, don't you do that. You're not just playing the fruits That's of the Spirit. Right. Right. You're showing them who you really are. Mm -hmm. So I had to just, I waved at them. It took all that Jesus in me to do it, but I did. Because I know what I wasn't in the wrong. But the Lord said, why try to prove a point? It ain't worth it. People have been killed trying to prove a point. People are losing their life trying to prove a point. So the fruits of the spirit, we got to understand. What is the difference between tithes and the first fruit? I'm, I'm asking that. Because a lot of people ask the question, Pastor, what's the difference between tithes and first fruit? Well, tithes, tithes is a 10%. First fruit is the total package of your increment. So it's a total package of your substance. Of your substance. In the old Bible, when they would give, they would give oxen, they would give doves, they would give whatever they could to the Lord because a lot of people didn't work. And now, this time now, we, we don't we can't afford all that. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to go buy you no know, hog or pig. I just can't <laughs> afford it. Amen. But I can go buy you some chicken every now and then. Mm -hmm. Am I right? So we offering God our first fruit. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna give to God? Every day of our life, we should be thinking, what are we gonna give to God? How are we going to, amen, what are we gonna offer him? Like this week, this week is holy week. Yeah. So I'm, I was asking people, what are you doing for God? Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do for him this week? What are you going to sacrifice for him? Mm -hmm. His son sacrificed for us. Yeah. What are we going to sacrifice for him? Amen. Mm -hmm. So when people see your fruit, they're going to start wondering. You know, a lot of times people want to see your demise. Yeah, they do. They yeah. want to see you fall. They do. Amen. Especially, I don't understand that your job. Yeah. People that you work with, that's what that, they the ones that want to see you fall. Yeah. Why? Come on. I, I don't understand. Why would you want to see me fall? Why would you want to not upbuild me right. for the kingdom? Amen. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So we have to understand this is the we're in the end time, y'all. Yes. This is evil days yes. ahead of us. Yes. We got some days ahead of us, and I'm gonna tell you something. If you're not living for God, you better start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because the Bible lets us know after death is the judgment. Mm -hmm. You're gonna know where your life is, and you're gonna know no. where your life is. You're gonna know where you're gonna spend eternity. Mm -hmm. Stop listening to these Facebook prophets, they don't know nothing. Right. And you listen to these Facebook prophets, say, oh, don't worry about it. No, 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 don't worry about it. No, no. You worry about it. Let me tell you something, because Jesus is soon to come. Are you going to be ready right. when he comes? Right. Everybody not going to see the rapture. Yeah. Everybody not going to see the rapture. So you have to give uh, out of your abundance. First of all, Proverbs 3 and 9 said, what does the fruit symbolize? Fruit often is a symbolism of abundance, advocate with the goodness of fertility, plenty, and the harvest. So in the end time, you're giving some fruit. It's like a harvest. And you, you can't expect a harvest if you're not going to plant nothing. Right. right. You can't ask God for some barley if you're not going to plant nothing. Mm -hmm. You can't ask God to increase in your life if you're not going to give him nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of times what we do. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. But what are we giving to him? Right. What are we sacrificing for the Lord? Right. What are we giving up for him? We're not like the world. We're of the world, but we're not like the world. We're different. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we're peculiar. That means you're different. Everybody not going to understand. Brother Jamal, I'm mean Brother Jamal. Happy feet, I don't know why I turned <laughs> People will ask you that. Why 
why you go to church. That's your time to witness. Yeah, I go to church because my relationship with God is very important. Yeah. Amen. Well, how do you know there's a God? You know, see, you got the devil going to come at all kinds. Uh -huh. He comes at all kinds of so, stuff. Yeah. How do you know it's a God? Well, yeah. I mean, you get all. I get these questions all the time. Mm -hmm. I said, search the scripture that. for yourself. Right. Right. I said, I'd rather, I, I, they said, well, how do you know that you're doing the right thing? Well, I, I'm believing all I can. Right, right. And if I missed the mark, it's not because I didn't know. It's because I didn't execute the plan. Am I right? I didn't, I didn't execute the plan. But I don't think the Lord will hold me in error if I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Am I right? Amen. So if you know what you're doing, you got to do it. Amen. Thank you. The Bible says if you, if you know to do good and you don't do good, it's, it's a sin thing. to know. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a sin. So if you if you know to do good but you don't do it, that's a, the Bible says it's a sin. Right. So you know you don't talk supposed to talk about your brother, you don't talk about your brother. Amen. Am I right? If you know you don't want to talk about your sister, you don't talk about your sister. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. Tell bearing is a sin. Right. That's gossip. Gossip is a sin. Yeah. Right. And we got a lot of gossipers in the church. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. When you come to church, you should be at peace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There should be a peace. There should yeah. be a calmness. Yeah. Amen. You come to church to praise God. Amen. To lift up his name. Yeah. Am I right? We come to church to give him our best. Yeah. How you going to give him the best if you mad all the time? Hello. Hello. How you going to give him the Hello. best if you don't like nobody? Hello. Am I right? We're, this is not about us, church. Right. The gospel is not about us. Mm -hmm. It's about him. Yeah. So when people see what you're doing, mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't smile coming to church, how do you want other people to come to church? Right. Am I right? Yeah. If you if you if you don't like coming to church, why do you want other folks to come to church? Amen. Thank you. If you don't support your own church, come on. Why you, how, why you want somebody else to support? Thank you. Come on. That's why I tell people. I said, church, we go to Bible study. If you don't come to the Bible study at your own church, why would you tell people about your Bible study? Amen. Amen. But they ask you, why don't you go? Amen. Amen. You, you won't tell me to go to church on Sunday. Why don't you go to your own church on Sunday? Amen. We gotta. Understand, we are the church. Amen. That's it. This Come is on. just a building, yes. but the yes. church is in us. Yes. Yes. Am I right? Yes. And once we get yes. that in our soul and our mind, that the yes. church is in us, we'll be more effective yes. in witnessing the people. Because yes. it's not about us; Amen. it's about God. Yes. Am I right? I, I will never want to do something to, to steer somebody away from God. Amen. Because a lot of times people say, "Oh, you, I thought you were saved. You talking to me like that?" You don't cuss somebody out. Uh -oh. You don't cuss somebody. When you say it, you don't cuss. Thank you. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. The place I used to go, I don't go no more. But there has to be a change, transformation. There has to be a change. And when you change, you don't want to go back to the same old stuff. Am I right? That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to go right back to the same old stuff that the Lord brought you out of. That way he can laugh at you. The enemy laughs at us. Right. He's like, I knew it. I knew brother. I knew brother watermelon wasn't gonna lie. Oh, I knew it. I knew I knew Miss Cantlow wasn't gonna make it. No, she wasn't gonna make it. Oh. And he laughs at us. Because he wants to see us fail. Yes, he do. Am I right? And we give him and a lot of times we blame a lot on the enemy. And it's not him, it's us. Oh, the devil. I hear that all the time. Pastor the devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't make you do it. You did it. Accountability. Sometimes it's so easy we just take accountability. Yeah. Right. We can avoid a lot of problems, <laughs> a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations. Like, yeah. man, it's me. It's my know. fault. Yeah. Maybe I looked at it wrong. Mm -hmm. But miscommunication mm -hmm. breaks up a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to say it again. I got five minutes, six minutes. Mm -hmm. Communication breaks up a lot of relationships. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of what we think. Mm -hmm. Pride comes before fall. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the enemy puts so much pride in our heart, we can't say, I'm sorry. We don't say, forgive me. Mm -hmm. We don't say none of that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather take you to eat to say, forgive me. Mm -hmm. I'd rather buy you a right. Dooney and Burke right. and then say, forgive me. Just forgive me. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What's wrong with that? Right. You ain't got to explain what the logistics of it. Just, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Am I right? A lot of times I, I, I quit people because I, I don't want to go through all the whole thing all over again. So I just said, I'm sorry. You get rid of it. Get done with it. Then they'll say, well, you don't mean that. Well, how do you know? Right. right. If I said it, don't tell me what I mean. Right. You're not in here. Right. Right. Oh, you're just saying that to pacify me. No, I'm saying it to get you off my back. But I also saying it because I want to get rid of it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible said, soft word turns away wrath. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. again. Soft word turns away wrath. Oh, yes, man. So when you talk to somebody, you got to watch the way you talk to them. Mm -hmm. That's displaying right. That's the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Hey man, I might be upset with you, but let me watch, and then I'm going to respect you. Respect the person in a position. Amen. I'm all right? If that person's older than you, respect that. Amen. That person has a title, respect that. Amen. Because you don't God to get you for that. Amen. God will get you for disrespecting the man and woman of God. Amen. Amen. I remember them boys, hey amen, they was messing with uh, Elijah. Oh, yeah. Elijah yeah. is calling bald head and ugly. Oh. And Elijah warned him, stop. stop. God will get you. Mm -hmm. He kept messing with him. What did the Lord do? The Lord sent a she bath yeah. out there and ate them up. Yeah. And that's why he said, touch them, my, not my anointing, and do my part no more. Yeah. Don't put your mouth in the man and woman of God. Yeah. That's, not, that's not the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit. So when you're doing the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit, you have to learn. Am I right? When you get saved, it's a learning process. Amen. You ain't going to learn everything overnight. Amen. When you become a Christian, you become new. Amen. All the old things should be what? Passed Amen. away. Amen. And everything should become new. Yeah, I'm not going to get everything right. I'm a pastor. I don't get everything right. Amen. But I've tried to better myself every day. Amen. I didn't get it right today, so let me get it right tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to start fresh. Lord gave me... He woke me up this morning, started me on my way, so mm -hmm. I can start fresh today. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Thank you, Lord. I can start all over today. You know what I mean? Just like on Sundays. I, maybe I didn't do good Sunday. I didn't give God praise Sunday. Well, Lord, next Sunday, I'm going to give you everything I got. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a praiser. That's what I do. I'm Amen. a praiser. And God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Amen. And that's why a lot of times we don't come in and praise God because we have so many weights on us. Mm -hmm. Weights hold you down. Yeah. And that's why the Bible said, let us out every sin and weight that sold easy you can beset you. Yeah. You got to let it to the side. You'll never see a runner with weights. Right. They won't go far. Right. So sometimes people are weighing you down in your Christian life. Mm -hmm. Some people, sometimes people are wearing down, weighing you down in your Christian walk. Yeah. Am I right? And we're wondering why we can't uh, get rid of this person. Because this person has sold into you so that you can't get rid of them. Am I right? Mm -hmm. The enemy knows how to get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. The enemy knows how to get you. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets you, he don't want to let you go. Right. He do not. He's, I desire to sift you as weak. Mm -hmm. But somebody prayed for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many minutes I got? Two minutes? Any questions? Yeah, you got? Two minutes. Here's some less, um, comments. Okay. Yeah. So we have to understand the, the fruits of the spirit. Fruits of the spirit. We have to let our lives emulate Christ. Amen. Am I right? Mm -hmm. We gotta let our lives depict who Christ is to us. What is Christ to you? How can I be better? You know, sometimes we deal with anger issues. I'm angry. I'm angry. And sometimes you're angry, you take it out on other folks that you shouldn't take it out on. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that person's fault. Yes. Sometimes we anger from our childhood. We're angry, we're angry from our upbringing, and it affects our Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Some things need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. Some things need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And how do you address it? Sometimes you got to go to the law. Amen. You've got to go to the law. And that's why I tell people, don't tell everybody your business. Because mm -hmm. right. everybody don't have your best interests. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some people bring a bone, they'll take a bone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you saying, Pastor? Whatever they say to you, they'll take it and tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. And they'll try to hold you to that. Yep. Girl, I got some dirt on you, boy. I got some dirt on you. You ain't going to never hold no dirt on me, God. Let it out. Right. Let it out. Let's address it. Right. Hello. I love somebody. But see, the enemy will keep you bound down. Mm -hmm. He'll keep you in bondage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll keep you in bondage. And then he'll put a lot of stuff on you. Your children, your family. You worry so many problems, you can't get a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Because your family coming to you. All the problems, they're coming to you. Mm -hmm. They're coming to you. They're coming to you. Mm -hmm. They're talking to you. Am I right? Before you know it, you're so weighted down. By the time you come to church Sunday, you have so many weights on you that you can't release anything. Mm -hmm. You can't give God nothing because you weighed it down. I'm wrapping it up. All right. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We thank you for our smile tonight. After our smile, we're going to go into our, uh, we're going to our Bible study. But tomorrow, I mean next week, the Lord said the same. And the is coming. Amen. For our Q&A. Amen. We'll be talking about the spirit of discernment. The importance of the spirit of discernment. I want y'all to come back like y'all did, did tonight on Q&A. We had a lot of people in our Q&A, and I am so thankful to God. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Remember, next week, the spirit of discernment, we're going to give you the scripture here.
Amen. The scripture will be coming from uh, the, 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 Romans 12, 1 through 4. Romans 12, 1 through 4. Study that for next week. The importance of the spirit of, the, of discernment. Knowing where the enemies are. Knowing where he's come. Remember, keep smiling. And remember, smile.